All right, so welcome back to a new one of this channel. And on Bitwig 5, we have track remotes and project remotes. And they are right here at the bottom. We have the project remote, we, have, we can have macros or modulators, and then we have the track remote, which is the same idea, modulators and uh, macros. So let's start with track remotes. Now, in the past, if we wanted to have a macro or modulator for a combine of things, we had to chain or layer. Now, let me give you an example. I'm going to be getting a polysynth right here, and maybe I'm going to be bringing a reverb. Now, if I wanted to do some modulation, I cannot just add maybe an ADSR right here, just to give you an example. And we can, you know, map whatever we have right here, but I cannot map the other device. Now, to do this, we needed to do it on a different way. We need to kind of a layer or just group everything. And if I bring the chain right here, then we put inside of the chain the synthesizer and whatever else that we want to modulate. And then inside we have the macros, just like, you know, we have right here. And then we have the different modulators. So if I maybe bring again an LFO just to give you an example, then and only then I can select this and I can map it here and I can map the reverb and everything else. So we need to put everything inside of something before we can control it with a global LFO or macro. So if you want to do something like this, now we don't need to, you have the track remotes. Now first of all, I'm going to be getting rid of the chain that I have right here and just can keep the synthesizer and the reverb. So when you open this, you have the ability to use macros and you can use modulators. Now, depending on the device that you're using, you might inherit some macros. If I bring the polymer, for example, there we go. I'm going to be dropping it right here. And if I open the polymer in this case, notice that this synthesizer gives us some predefined pages, right? So we can control the oscillator and whatever, you know, the output and whatever. This doesn't mean that you cannot add your own. So in this case, maybe I'm going to be adding a new page. And there you go. Now you have macros that you can, you know, put on whatever you want. If I bring the reverb and I just toss it right there, if I'm going to be selecting what to map, I'm going to be mapping this one, I'm going to be mapping the uh, cutoff. So now when I move, so now when I move the cutoff, it's going to move it. But this one maybe is going to be, I don't know, the time of the reverb and we can see it grooving. Let me make this smaller. So now we have again a track remote and this works like a chain, right? We can map different things of, of different devices and this will work on it again, track level. The other thing that you get is going to be the modulators. So when we bring a modulator like an LFO, now I can modulate the whole track, all the devices inside the track with one single modulator, just like that. There we go, something like that. So we can see it. So pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to do something like this, now you don't need to use a layer or you don't need to use a chain. Still, you know, the chains and the layers, they still have a place. And, you know, we, we can use it for different things, not just for this. But this, you know, it's very convenient. So another thing that you can do with the track remotes is that you can control the volume and the panning. If I select something right here, that is that everything that it's uh, mappable is just kind of a highlighted. If I go to the left, Notice that we have the panning and then we have the volume. And then right here at the top, we have the same thing. So if I wanted to map the volume, I can control the volume of the track with this. And with this one, I'm going to be controlling the panning, right? So if I wanted to bring a modulator or to modulate the panning with an LFO, we can. Now, all the controls are accessible right here. We can just close them and access them, access to them whenever we want to. Still, they are on a track level. That's why they are called track remotes and not project remotes. We can go there in a second. So you need to go to the channel to have access to these controls. If I go to the pulse synth, we don't have it because we might have different things for this track. Now still, you know, we need to go to select the track. But when you go to the mix view, if I go right here, notice that we have all these options, all the tracks. And then right here in the right side, you have a tiny little icon right now. If I click it, it's going to show you the same remotes. So you might close this view and you still get access to pretty much whatever you mapped or you have you mapped or you have on the have on the track remotes. All right, so track remotes, a fantastic little thing that now we get. And the other thing is going to be the global remotes. So the global or project remotes in this case, they work just like the track remotes, but they're, you know, for the whole project, they are global. You still have your macros that you can use, maybe add a page or do something, or maybe add a modulator. I'm going to be doing an LFO again, 
There we go. So now uh, the difference is that this one works on a project level. If I create something right here, let me just, uh, I'm going to be mapping, I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be mapping uh, the cutoff again, or maybe the attack of this synthesizer, right? And I'm going to be doing some modulation of the waveform. This ones work on a project level. So if I uh, get out of this and I go to the polysynth, notice that we have the same track remotes because they work on a project level. So if I'm doing something on the polymer and maybe I go to the polysynth, let me just add something right here. So the polymer is doing something, right? If I go to the polysynth, which is a different track, and I want to change whatever is mapped to these controls, I can do so from a different track, right? So we can do so. Now the thing is that you need to be a little bit more descriptive right here because cut off an attack could mean anything. So in this case, you will need to maybe, I don't know, name your track and then, uh, I don't know, which is cut off, something like that, whatever. But they work on a, a global level. Now on this ones, you can do some other things like you can do with the track. If I select something, it's giving you the same options that you can map. You can map the different tracks, you know, this track in this case, you can map the panning and, you know, everything else. But right here at the top, you have more options like the groove and you can map the tempo. So you can control maybe the tempo from here. If I go up, it's going to be, you know, changing the tempo. All right. Like we did before with the track remotes, you can control the volume and the panning of each track. But this one, it's going to be, you're going to be mapping it globally. So let's say I want to do this audio track. So when I go down, it's going to be doing that audio track. Now, let me give you one more tip. Um, let's say that you're working on a track. You have, I don't know, a million tracks right here, a lot of devices and a lot of things. And you are using a lot of project uh, remotes and you have your macros, your modulator. So the thing is that to access to the project remotes, you need to select the track, then go right here at the bottom and then do whatever it is that you need to do. But you need to go to a track. Now you don't need to. If I close all of this and you follow my mouse, is go, you're gonna need to go right here to the, jo, to the show project panel. If I select it, it's gonna give you the project remotes. You can handle it from there, from here without selecting a track. Now still notice that you don't get the modulators. Uh, it's something that you don't get from this view. If I expand it, notice that you don't get it. Now still, when you uh, create a project remote and you add the modulator, it's going to give you a page to handle whatever it is that you're doing with the beat LFO in this case. So you have the same thing right here. You can go to beat LFO and you get it. All right, so that's it. That's the project remotes and the track remotes. Just a useful, you know, new feature that we get on Bitwig 5. And now one more thing before we go. If I select this right here and I go to this option and I select it, notice that we get options. So you can access to whatever it is that you're doing right here without opening it. Uh, you can close it right here. So you have the options right there now what happens if i'm standing on a track remote i'm gonna go to the polymer and i know i and i know i have some things right here on the on the track remote when i select it and then go to this option the second option you have right here you have again access to the cutoff and all the properties all the macros that you're you have on that track all right so that's it so track remotes and project remotes just a wonderful a wonderful new thing that we get with the uh with the number five that uh, at the point of this recording uh is on beta and it has been for a long time. Uh, hopefully they release a stable version soon because it's just, you know, a long time. Okay, so that's it. So if you liked all this and you learned something, now you know what the track and the project remotes are. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and see you on the next one.